Good morning, church. Welcome to worship on this Sunday morning. Now, it is also Independence Day weekend. And one of the good things about online worship is that no matter how late the fireworks on your street kept you awake last night, you can watch worship anytime, any hour, any day. And so, welcome to all of you, no matter what day it is, no matter what time it is, we welcome each and every one of you. And you know what? We're just glad you're here with us. You might want to stick around today. You might want to stick around in worship today because we are pleased, very pleased, to welcome back our senior choir. In a whole new way, you ain't seen nothing yet. Let me tell you what, you aren't going to want to miss it. Trust me. And now, there's a reason that I'm standing on a tall, small ladder on the side wall of the church in front of this banner. This banner is here because we've repainted the church. We are just about done. Probably by the time you watch that, this, I will be finished painting the sanctuary. We'll be ready to go. But we've also got new banners. I wanted you to see them, donated by the Tulsi family. And the reason we are getting ready to go is for the big announcement. And the big announcement is this. We hope to restart worship in church. Yes, in church. On Sunday, September the 6th, we will have all three worship services, but I encourage you to go back and watch the OSLC Digest from June the 5th. It explains what's going to happen explains the hows and the whats of worship in these days of a pandemic. The date of September 6th is firm, but it is not written in stone, as we just don't know what the future holds. But for now, that will be the date. Yet, it will be a flexible date, September the 6th. Now, if you will, let's pray our way into worship this morning. Let us pray. O oh, still, small voice, the noise of the fireworks has died down, and we slow down and look for quiet. Speak to us in this time. Speak to us as we come, not as we pretend to be, but as we are. We confess from the beginning of this worship that we are lost. But without you, Lord, we would be lost forever. That's why we are here. Seek us, Lord. Be with us this day. Speak to us. Empower us as we praise you. May you dwell in us more fully that we might worship you with all our being with all our hearts, and with all our souls. Make your love real, here and now. Through your Son we pray. Amen. And now, our opening hymn. That sail in heaven alone Oh, pray 
giving others take your part Oh, sing ye hallelujah Ye who long pain and sorrow bear Praise God and on Him cast your care Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah Let all things their Creator bless And worship Him in humbleness Hello, greetings. Today's lesson comes to us from Matthew, reading from the 11th chapter. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. Then he began to reproach the cities in which most of his deeds of power had been done, because they did not repent. Woe to you, Horizon! Woe to you, Bethsaida, for if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, it will be more intolerable for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? No, you will be brought down to Hades. For if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you that on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom than for you. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him, come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light.
Thank you, Sharon, for that uh, powerful reading of our gospel. Our gospel where we hear about the crowds following Jesus. The crowds were moved. The crowds were listening. The crowds were still following. Jesus had them. And then Jesus lost them. Today's gospel lesson is filled with powerful language, powerful images, and powerful words. Words about joy and sorrow, words about weddings and funerals, and words about life, and words about death. Jesus speaks to the crowds, the crowds who were still tagging along. They'd, they'd seen the miracles, They'd seen the signs, but it's just as Jesus says. We played the flute, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. I came, and you did not follow. And that's the crux of our lesson. Jesus came, the kingdom of heaven had come near, but the people would not dance. They would not commit. They would only go so far. Kind of, sort of like us. Now, if you noticed, our lesson this morning is written in three parts. Three very distinct pieces. The opening piece about playing the flute, but not dancing. The part about wailing, but not mourning. And... Then there is the section at the end, the come unto me part, the come unto me, you who are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest, that part. But then there's another part. There's those six verses that are kind of stuck in the middle. Woe to you, it says, woe to you, woe to everybody. Jesus came, but no one danced. Jesus came, and no one followed. In reality, these towns, he listened, these missing verses, they all rejected him, even his hometown of Capernaum. Woe to them, people! Woe! And so the question is, why in the world would you reject Jesus? Jesus, the bread of life, why in the world would you reject Jesus, the light of the world? Why in the world would you reject Jesus, the, the soon-to-be Savior of us all? Why in the world would you reject Jesus? Woe to you! Woe to you if you do! Now, you do realize that woe is a death lament. That really means in Bible language that woe is the opposite of life. In other words, accept Jesus, life. Reject Jesus, woe. And you know what? There's a lot of woe here. There's a lot of rejection here. Why in the world would you reject Jesus? Life is hard enough, isn't it? Why would you reject the one who offers us life? And life these days, gosh, it's a struggle at best, isn't it? Why in the world would you reject the one who is the rock, the foundation, the gate to life? The struggles in this life, the pains in this life, they surround us every waking hour and we need help. 
We need help and we need Jesus. And that is the question. You know, Jesus lays it out pretty succinctly for the crowds that were hanging out and lays it out pretty succinctly for us too. Follow life, reject woe. But the most important part of this lesson, at least for me, revolves around the come unto me, you who are heavily burdened. That part of our gospel lesson. Come unto me, you, you who are stuck in the pains of life. Come unto me, you who are struggling to breathe. Come unto me, you who feel like you cannot go on. Come unto Jesus, all who are stuck in the woes. Come into the light. Dance with the Lord. No more mourning. No more pain. Why in the world would you reject that? Why indeed? You know, this, this last part of our lesson is important. Why? Because it's an invitation. It is the invitation of God. It is the invitation of Jesus. An invitation that says, no matter how many times you have rejected, no matter how many times you've turned your back, no matter how much your world feels like you're being swallowed up in fear and woe, no matter what, Jesus still invites you home. Come unto me. Jesus still invites you in. Come unto me. Bring your burdens, bring your hurts, and I will give you rest. Jesus tells us that in this world where we constantly turn our backs on God, <laughs> and don't think that you never do, because we all do, Jesus tells us that in a world where we feel apart from God, God still cares. And God still invites us home. Jesus tells us that when the powers and the principalities feel like they're going to swallow us up, God cares. And God invites us to dance. God invites us to dance. Even if we die, it does not happen apart from God. Even if we feel totally abandoned, God knows, God understands, and even if our prayers do not seem to be answered, God does care. Even if it feels like the quicksands of life are swallowing us whole, God cares and God invites us to life. Even when everything seems hopeless, God cares because Jesus is. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. That is the promise of God. The promise that God will take care of us. The promise that God will never abandon us. Even when we abandon God. And you know what? It's more than a promise. It is a rock solid guarantee. A promise won through the fires of crucifixion. A promise that enables us to speak up, to shout it out. And today, today that same, same crucified and risen Lord is in our midst inviting us. Come unto me and live, he says. Because Jesus continues to invite us, allowing us to stop being afraid. Amen? Amen. Well, maybe not the final amen. Because Jesus says, Come unto me, you who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. And even though we're not always on God's side, God is always on our side. Yes, indeed, I'm going to say that again. Even though we are not always on God's side, God is always on our side. Fear not, and come unto Jesus this day, and he will give you rest. May you find God's peace. May you find God's refreshing grace. And may you find the joy of placing your lives in God's hands. Why in the world would you reject that? Amen. And that's the, the real amen. Amen. And now, my friends, a real treat for all of you. 
Thank you to Luke for the hours and hours of editing to make this happen. And thank you to all the choir members, all the choir members who have participated. And so, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in months and months, may I present to you the Our Savior Lutheran Church Senior Choir. of the church. Again, at the end of each petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and if you would please respond with, hear our prayers. Let us pray. Lord, on this Independence Weekend, may we give thanks for all, all throughout the years who have fought for our freedoms. May we also pray for those who are still fighting to end the injustices, still working to end the divisions, still trying to speak a truthful word. Lord, freedom is not free. Democracy is advanced citizenship. Give us the strength to keep up the fight for freedom for all. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, help us as our nation now suffers through what we have already experienced here in New York. 
Lord, please spread the word that strong people do wear masks. Please help us to find a cure. And please, Lord, may our leaders take this seriously and bring us together. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you played the flute and we did not dance. Lord, you wailed and we did not mourn. Lord, you came and we did not follow. Be with us. Strengthen our, our faith despite being outside your sanctuary. Bind us together in new and different ways. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, watch over us this weekend as bars and beaches open, as backyards and streets will be filled. May we be smart. May we be safe. May we be strong. Lord, in your mercy. And now into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue now by praying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue worship with our closing hymn today, Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages, clap for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flow be of sin the double cure Save from wrath and make me pure Not the labor of my hands Can fulfill thy law's demands Could my zeal no respite
for me. Let me hide myself in thee. And now receive God's benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May you all have a safe and blessed weekend. Stay safe, be well, stay well. We'll see you all soon. Blessings to each and every one of you.